In this video, I show you how to use the instrument tracks in Steinberg's Cubase 12 to produce a first song. You have little or no knowledge of music theory, you have no idea about audio or music production, no problem. No matter what previous knowledge you have, I explain everything clearly and easily understandable, so that it is easy for you to follow me and you have your first song ready after just a few minutes. My name is Thomas Foster, nice to have you here, have fun! So I go to the file menu, say new project and we create here an empty song. Uh, Cubase asks me where to place all the samples and datas, so let's say open and here we are in Cubase 12. The first thing we want to load is some drums. Uh, for this we go here to the VST instruments and if you don't see this you have to open the right zone here with this button. So again we go to VST instruments and open the drums to find the groove agent. We click on it, hold down the mouse and place it uh, here to have a first track with our drum sounds. We already loaded some drums in the last tutorial, but I show you again, you just click here um, to load a sound. Maybe this time, why don't we go, if we scroll down here a little bit, to the house kit 02. So, and here we have loaded the drum samples, like the bass drum and the snare drum, but there is now a simpler trick to get a final groove. We go to pattern. And here, if I click now on the first button, I have a complete pattern. Uh, and here, a full groove. Here, break. Very cool. So, let's move the first groove. I click on it, hold down the mouse and we place it here in the first bar. So um, it's now two bars long, but I want it four bars long. So to repeat it, we go with the mouse on top of this clip where we get these two dots here. With the lower dot you can make the clip longer, but we need the middle clip to repeat it one time. So now it's four bars starting at one until five, exactly four bars. On bar five, I want to have the groove seven, that's this button here. Let's place it here on bar number five. And we also repeat it one time. So we have also the second bar over four bars. Or oh, you know what? Why don't we place a break here? So I click on this, I erase it again and we place the break on bar 7. So while we are listening to it, we can change the tempo. Maybe we go up to 125 here in the tempo box. So let's listen to it. Let's change the tempo. And at the end a little break. Very good. So the drums are already done. Very easy, right? Okay, now we want to load a bass sound. For this we need another instrument, so we go again to the right zone, we click here on the VST instruments, we close the drums, we close the samplers. Don't worry if you don't have so many names here, because I have Installs, uh, installed a lot of plugins that you maybe don't have. So we go to Synth and we scroll down until we see the <coughs> Halion. Uh, here it is, the Halion. And we click on it and move it in the second track, in the second instrument track. And here we search for another instrument. Let's find the Synth Bass 2. Let's make a double click here 
to load the synth bass too. And now we can play it on our keyboard. If you don't have a keyboard or you never learned how to play the keyboard, don't worry, I show you in a minute how to add some notes without a keyboard. But if you learned the keyboard, I want to show you how to record something. So uh, let's close this instrument. You remember to open it again. We have to click here the uh, edit instrument button, then we can open it again. But now we close it. We place the mouse here on bar four because now I want to record something. And now we click here the record button. You also can do this with the star on your number block of your keyboard. Did you know, realize what I played? It's a song, it's from David Bowie, Rolling Stones. I'm not sure. If you know which song it is, please write it in the comments. All right, um, let's listen to this. Okay, to see it, we make a double click on it. Now we see here the notes and we see also that I was not really perfect. This is not on the line. Perfect would be exactly on the line. Here I play the wrong note. That's the first thing I do. I erase this note. But again, this note is too early. It would be exactly on the line. It would be perfect in time. I could change this by moving the note. So I could take this note and move it to the line. Now it's on the line. But there's a better trick. Uh, we go here to quantize. And if you click on quantize, everything will be moved to the next line. So if you look to this note here and this note, if I click on quantize, three, two, one, click, we move all the notes exactly to the line. Now it's perfect in time. But it's really important that you know how to quantize it. Because if you change this here from 16 to quarter notes, you can click to quantize it in quarter notes. But in this case, this would not be so good as I played 16. So to make this uh, uh, undo, we go here to edit and say undo quantize. You also can do this with command or control set. Okay. So, but maybe you don't have a keyboard or you have a keyboard, but you are not able to play it. So let's erase this again. You can do this here with the rubber tool or with if it's selected with the backspace key on your keyboard. Uh, to do something new, we create an empty clip. Um, we hold down and make a clip over two bars or you just make it over one bar and now you use the dot on the bottom to make it longer. So it's now exactly two bars. Okay, now we double click to see the piano roll. And if you want to, if you don't know which key to use, I would recommend to work in C if you want to make a major track because C, you always can use the white keys. You can stay on the white keys in C major. Or if you want to make a more sad or more cool song, maybe work in A minor because also in A you can stay on the white keys. What is a little bit simpler to understand which keys to use. So, but now we have to find the right A. So the A, we want to make a song in minor. So we decided to work in A minor because here we can stay on the wide keys and everything sounds fine. Um, for bass, now we have to find the right A. The A is always two notes lower than the C. So here's C4, two notes lower. This is the A. But it sounds not like a bass, so it's too high. So also again, here's the C, two notes lower, one, two, this is the A. Still, it's not a cool low bass. We scroll down, here's the C2. Sounds better, but still too high for me. Ah, that's much better. 
maybe still too high. Oh, that's too low. So this one is cool. Uh, we are, take care that we see the 16th. You also can do this here in the editor is also this menu. And now we take the pencil or the draw tool um, to add a note and we add a note here in the beginning at A0. And we take care that it's two bars long. So you can click here at the end of the note to make this load. Uh, sorry, it's not two bars, it's two sixteenth long, means an eight note. Okay, let's listen to this. Mm -hmm. To hear just this two bars that we are working on, we click here where we get the pencil in the gray area, click down, hold down the mouse and move to bar seven. So we made a circle that we can activate here with this button. You also can change the circle here with this number boxes, the right locator of the circle and the, uh, the left and the right locator. And now we're in a circle. Okay. If you want to make a cool rhythmic in a house, EDM, dance track, or also in a pop track, it's always nice to use a eight dotted note. What is an eight dotted note? An eight dotted note is exactly three sixteenths. But we keep this note two sixteenths. But we copy it three sixteenths means, uh, means uh, eight dotted note later. So uh, I click on the note, I hold down the option key and move it three sixteenths. One, two, three later. So two sixteenths for the first note, one empty space, and then the next. And we do this trick again and again and again and again. Let's listen to this. Pretty cool, huh? And um, you always you don't have to make this always. You also can change it and suddenly make just the eighth note or go here and make it sometimes more. But you will find out it's always cool to have this um, dotted eighth note means that the six uh, three sixteenths. Um, and we don't have to start at the first beat. Why don't we move everything? So I, I make. A square while holding down the mouse. Here I click here and hold down the mouse and make a square over all notes. You also can just select one note and make command or control A to select all the notes. And now we move it to 16th to the right, so one eighth later. Let's listen to this. Very cool. And now we need a chord progression because it's not, we don't want to stay at one chord, just at the A, that's not so interesting. Uh, so in the first bar, we want to stay on A. In the second bar, we want to change this. Uh, but to do something new, let's copy this first bar. So I erase this note here. I select all notes, uh, hold down the option key, and now I copy it to the se uh, second bar. Also, again, exactly uh, two sixteenth after the beginning of the bar, right? And now we can make this window here a little bigger by clicking here in the line between the two windows. Now let's move this note up to another note. Basically all right keys are cool. So the B is not the best note, but the C for example is cool. I go up to the D. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Sometimes you change your chords every bar. Means uh, on the first bar we are now at the first uh, key here in A. Here we are at key number four in D. Um, but you also can cha change your chord progression in half bars. So why don't we here a half bar later go up to another note? Let's take the E for example. Mm -hmm. 
this is nice, but uh, I prefer to uh, stay here also on the E. That's pretty cool. Why don't we copy this here? It means repeat by clicking here on this dot and we repeat it. So we have this theme over four bars. Now we want to add another instruments, uh, instrument. And for understanding, you can use two kinds of instruments. All the instruments of Steinberg, of Cubase, that you have installed. Uh, that depends on the version you have. In the biggest version, you have a lot of instruments. In the smaller version, you just have some instruments. But um, the second category of instruments that you can install are VST instruments. And VST instruments you can buy of many companies. Many companies are doing VST instruments and VST audio effects. And you can use these instruments in Cubase even if they are not from, uh, from Cubase. Um, I will show you one example of a very interesting VST instruments because you will not find enough instruments in Cubase to make a great song. So there is one great plugin that is totally for free and it sounds amazing. It's a must have if you want to produce music. Uh, so go to Mugent, M -U -G -E -N -T com, And here you can search for sounds and samples and loops and they are all free and you can use them in your songs. Uh, and and uh, release them songs on Spotify totally for free, so you will love it. But I want to show you something else. If you scroll down a little bit, you find the Mutant Player. This is your first VST instrument. Like I told you, you can download it for free. Simply download the PC or the Mac version, uh, run the installer, and then restart Cubase. After restarting Cubase, you should find the Mutant Player here under Samples. So again, we open the right zone. We take care that we go to VST Instruments and here we open the sampler. And here is the Mutant Player. After opening it the first time, you maybe have to register and then simply go to Go. And then we can load the instruments very easy. So we go now to instruments, we go to the keys and here we choose a piano. Yeah, let's load by with a double click or here with the load function, the house piano. And now we can play the house piano on our keyboard. Let's listen to this. Very nice. But maybe you don't have a keyboard connected. Maybe you are not able to play the piano. So we do something really simple. We copy the bass because we need the same chord pro uh, progression like in the bass and the piano. Let's listen to this. Very nice. Um, maybe we um, want to go up for one octave with this note here. So now we want to make a chord. So let's um, say Command A or uh, Control A to activate everything. You also can do this if you uh, zoom out a little bit, simply like this. And now we want to make a chord. A chord means we have to go with the first note, two notes up and two notes up again. Two times, two notes up. Very easy to remember. So let's do this. Uh, we select everything. Click on the first note, hold down the option key or the 
Alt key. We go up to the next white key. Forget the black key. And one time up again. Here we are. So the second white key. And again. Forget the black key. Up to the first. Forget the black key. Up to the second white key. Two times two white keys up. And here we have a chord. So this is too low. Let's make this here one octave higher. So we select the second uh, bar, all the notes in the second bar, and hold, we could go one note up or down with the arrow keys. But if you hold down the shift key, you can go up one octave like this. I like how it sounds here. I don't so much how it sounds here. So let's select the two lowest keys and again shift key arrow up. So we just make the two lower keys one octave higher. So that's the inversion of the first chord. So it's not so good in the music if you jump too much. So you see this chord is too far away from this chord. How can we make them closer? Simply by bringing one note an octave up or two notes an octave up. And you always can play this game. So simply select some notes and bring them an octave up and listen how it sounds. I like it like this. This sounds very cool. I would like to change something. I would like to make the third chord a little longer here. And also here the third chord in the second bar. One, two, three. Let's make it longer. Maybe we should do the same with the bass. So here we make it longer and here we make it longer. So also we copy it again, so I erase this one and now we select both and repeat them both, right? And the piano we copy to the beginning or we move it to the beginning and make some repetitions here. Uh, be careful that you don't have two patterns or clips at the same time. Simply erase everything, just keep one clip and now we repeat it until the end. Okay. Still the piano is too loud for me. So now it's time to go to the mixer. How cool. We have a mixing console. And in every uh, channel, we have here the, the drums. We can go to solo to listen what it is, right? Here are the drums. Here is the bass. So just click on the S to listen solo to it or click on the M to mute it. So I would say the keys are too loud. But maybe we start from the beginning, we mute the uh, keys and the bass. I like the drums. Okay, let's add the bass. Maybe a little too loud. Better. And now we add the piano. Maybe this time we go down to zero and we bring it while it's playing slowly into here what is a good volume. Okay, now let's start, make a circle starting at the beginning and go one bar longer than everything is so we don't cut uh, the reverb of the ending. And now let's listen to it. Let's move the cursor to the beginning. Here we go. Pretty cool, I would say. Um, sometimes, in, or very often in music, it's good to make a little break before the next bar. 
uh, or the next part, I would say. So here we have the first part in our little example. It's just four bars. In practice, it's always better to have eight bars. And, but it's always four, eight or 12 or 80% of the time. And now we need a little break. So let's give away the drums. Let's make them shorter. A break can be a half bar or a full bar. So we bring in some air. We thin it out a little bit before we come with the full power on the next part. Let's listen to this. And here we go. Break in the drums, reverb at the end. So we have in our circle the reverb uh, as a part of it. And um, now we should do something very important. We should save our project. I do this on the desktop. Let's go here and say uh, my first um, dance track. Alrighty. Um, but now we want to send this song to our friend or to our mommy or whoever. Yeah. So uh, we are not able to send a Cubase file to them because they are not able to open it. Right. Uh, so if you look here at my desktop, uh, where is my desktop? Here is my first dance track. But my friend do not have Cubase. So they're not able to open it. What they need is an audio file. So we go again to our project to the file menu. And now we say export audio mix down. Uh, the name is already my first dance track. That's fine. And now we can say, where do we want to have this? Um, by default, it's the mix down folder in the Cubase folder that we made. Um, but you can also say here, no, I want to have it on my desktop. Let's, let's do this. Let's go to choose and say, go to desktop. And here we save it. And now we can say, do we want a WAV file? What is good if you want to upload it to Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. It's good quality. Or we make an MP3, MPEG 1 layer 3 is the perfect name of MP3. And um, that is, there you don't have so much MB, not so much megabytes. So you can send it via email, what is great. So this is good for sending us to our friend. And now we say export audio. And this is happening offline. And now we find on our desktop the project. So we can open it again one week later. And we find the MP3 that we can send to our friend. I created a playlist for you with all the videos I made for Cubase 12. Uh, you find this playlist in the description of this video. Please write me in the comments if this video was helpful for you or if you have any questions to Cubase 12. Thank you for watching. Always stay creative. Cheers! We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugent Player comes with a composition, MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session, so you can be inspired not only by a sound, but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugent Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugent Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files, 
and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugent to make music. <laughs> 